Greetings from Tokyo, I'm Trip, and welcome to the Hammer of Wrath. This week, you and I are gonna paint a grim dark Imperial Fist. Let's go. Thanks for joining me in the studio. Today's video is unique. It marks our first community challenge. I shared a challenge with our small but growing Discord community to paint something in the grim dark style. And of course, I wouldn't issue that challenge unless I was willing to do it myself. So today, I'm gonna to show you how to paint a grim dark Imperial Fist. But not only am I gonna show you my final result, but I'll be sharing the results from my Discord community as well. But first, I wanna talk quickly about Mandarake. What you saw in the intro was the deep, dark stairwell to Mandarake, which is a comics and collectible shop deep in the heart of Shibuya in Tokyo. It's actually really far underground. The entrance is at street level and it's very unique as you can see in the intro video. But as you go down and down and down and down and down, you realize it's much farther underground than you first thought. Now, when you do get there, you spill out into this sort of quaint, low-lit shop with wall-to-wall -wall glass racks of collectibles on consignment. Anything you can imagine down there if you're a Japanese toy collector, from Showa-era metal toys all the way up to late 80s and early 90s manga and anime merchandise. It is absolutely incredible. Now, unfortunately, they don't allow photos to be taken in there, but I think if you troll around online, you'll find one or two that have been smuggled out. Well, let's get started with today's video, and I'll show you how I painted a very fast, grimdark Imperial Fist Space Marine. I started by applying an all-over black prime with my airbrush. That took approximately 30 seconds. And when that was dry, I did a Zenithal highlight with a white primer, which took about 20 seconds. This step is actually pretty important as it establishes the shadows and highlights of the model. I then applied a shadow layer of pink on the underside of the model. It looks strange, but this is going to work really well with our yellows. And that took about 20 seconds. Once that was dry, I then used Uriel yellow on all the areas that were white. And as this goes over the pink, it creates a golden orange for our shadows. This took about another 30 seconds. And when that was dry, we created our final highlight with Flash Gets Yellow, just spraying directly from the top, and this took about 20 seconds as well. With our yellows complete, I then sprayed the base using Steel Legion Drab. Absolutely okay if a little over sprays onto the boots here, as we want it to look like he's been tromping through this dusty world, and we're going to be using a bunch of weathering powders later anyway. And this step took about 30 seconds. Once I'd laid down my earth tones, I then decided to highlight the statuary and rubble on that using a cold gray, and again, just another 20 seconds here. Once I'd laid in my base colors, I knew I was going to have to apply some decals to the model, so I used a gloss varnish to prepare the surface for the decals. We only need them in a few spots here, so this took about 40 seconds to apply. While I was waiting for that to dry, I then moved on to the bolter and painted the entire thing black, knowing that the casing was going to be black, and black undercoat is best for metallics that we'll use on the magazine and barrel as well. I also applied a black base coat anywhere else on the model that would need metallics. This took me about a minute. I then spent 30 seconds to paint the soft seals on the suit using a rust gray. This will look great once the wash settles into the recesses. Now with a black undercoat set for all my metallic parts, I come in with lead belcher and absolutely incredible paint, and I'm just working my way around the model quickly. This paint is absolutely amazing because it covers in a single coat and looks incredible. Here I've spent maybe a minute and 30 seconds to do all the metallics on the model. We've only the final details to base coat at this point, so I took 60 seconds to finish off the purity seal on his shoulder pauldron and the pouches on his belt. Once the gloss varnish was dry and the model was ready for decals, I moved on to the most time-intensive part of this entire process. There's a separate tutorial for applying decals on my channel, which is linked in the corner. This took about four minutes. Once the decals were set, I used an old frayed brush and some yellow paint to add some chipping and wear to the decals. This was relatively quick and only took about 30 seconds. Then, using a sponge and some dark brown paint, I set about chipping and weathering the armor all over the model. It's easy to go overboard, so I just did it quickly, and it took about 30 seconds. 
This is where the fun stuff starts. I then mixed an oil wash with a small amount of Van Dyke brown and black, and using some mineral spirits and an old brush, mixed it into a wash. This step took about 30 seconds, and once it was ready, I applied it all over the model. There's no reason to be careful here. You just wanna make sure you're applying it heavily across the board. You wanna make sure it gets into all the recesses and shadows and covers every inch of the model. I spent a solid 60 seconds to make sure I had total coverage. Now, this is where I make a small confession. The title is a little clickbaity and that you have to allow the oil wash to dry for 20 minutes. But when that 20 minutes is up, you simply go through with a makeup sponge, working your way around the model, hitting all the high spots and wiping away the wash. If you want to do some details, you can use a Q-tip like this to get into those smaller parts. And if you want some areas to be cleaner, like the shoulder pauldrons or the top of the power pack, use a tiny bit of mineral spirits to remove the wash. In this single step, which took me about two minutes, I completely transformed the look of the miniature. And for our final grim dark step, we are going to use weathering powders. Now, a second confession, this is actually the first time I've ever used weathering powders. I purchased these at a local hobby shop for about $5, and they came with three different colors. Here I'm applying a yellow ochre or sand color first along the base in order to integrate the sand and his feet. And then I'm going to move on to a second darker color. I believe this is called Rusty Earth from Tamiya. And I'm just going to work my way around with an old brush, applying that along the bottom of the boots, and in some cases in the corners of the pauldrons and other places that might catch the dust of a thousand worlds after countless battles. And if I've applied too much, you just go through with a wet Q-tip, wiping away in some of the high spots. This entire step took about two minutes. I'm going to take this opportunity to thank my patrons, my mallet bearers, Adam Fox, Love, Christopher Duran, Finn Melia, and a new member, Jay Tribbs, our Sledgehammer members, Cody Newton, Joshua Kreba, and a new member, Deet, and of course, our Thunderhammer bearers, Matt Mitchum, The Rascal, and Josh Hannon. You guys are incredible. Thank you for all your continued support. One of our newest members, Jay Tribbs, sent in this really great Imperial Knight. I love the weathering on the decals. Incredible. And something I didn't think I'd ever see, a grim dark Eldar sent in by the Rascal. And he also sent in these absolutely incredible grim dark patinaed Adeptus Custodes models. Well, there you have it one speed painted grim dark imperial fist i swear i will not i will not i will not start a fourth space marine army this is just a test model maybe a kill team no 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 we're good i just three space marine armies is enough it's enough is it enough well, I hope you enjoyed the video. It was my genuine pleasure to make and share it with you. If you'd like to support the channel, please like, comment, and subscribe. Drive us to the front page of YouTube so we can grow our audience. Consider joining our Discord. Joining at any level grants you access to our private Discord server where our small but growing community helps each other become better hobbyists every day. And you can always check out my t-shirt shop, bakingsodatees.com, where I create one-of-a-kind, unique designs not available anywhere else. Thanks again for joining me, and I'll see you on the next one.